Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming tech emulation and open source news, and sometimes reviews. In this video, we're taking a look at the Blackview MP100 Mini PC. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Blackview sent me this MP100 Mini PC for a fair and honest review, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. It's worth noting, I'm allowed to say whatever I want on this device, no holds barred. Now this MP100 that was sent to me features an AMD Ryzen 7 5825U, and it also has 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. So taking a look inside the box, and the very first thing that's on the top here that we see is that MP100. I'll set that aside and see what else is in the box. So underneath that, we've got an instruction manual, and underneath all of that, we've got the rest of the accessories here. So this is a metal mounting plate if you wanted to mount it to a wall or something, or even behind a monitor. Although this device can support multiple monitors at the same time, they included one HDMI cable. And they also included the power adapter, and this outputs at 19 volts and 3.42 amps for 64.98 watts. And here's a better look at the Blackview MP100. Taking a look at this thing here, and I can see immediately there are a few marks on the casing. Uh, it doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, uh, well, this is something to note. It was like this right out of the box. But moving on from that and taking a look at the front of this device, we've got two USB-C ports, one USB Type-A port, and one headphone jack. And interestingly, the air intake is on the front, not on the sides. The sides of this device are completely clean. And here's a better look at the back. So at the top of the back, we have some venting. There's also the Ethernet jack, a USB Type-A, it's 3.2 Gen 2, a USB 2.0 port, a display port, an HDMI port, and the power port. And on the bottom of this, we've got some screws and some more venting, but just some minor venting. Very interestingly with this case, the venting is at the front and the back at the top. So let's take a look on the inside. There's only four screws holding on this back cover. Removing the bottom panel was a little bit more difficult than I thought. It's not like it was impossible to remove, but it was really clamped in there. I honestly thought I was gonna crack it by removing it. And here's a better look at the inside of the mini PC. You can see here it's not necessarily the most accessible unless you are looking to quickly add an HDD disc, because yes, we've got a port for that there. Uh, but I am going to have to remove another cover altogether. Now, interestingly, there are four more screws holding that panel on, and now that those screws are out and the panel is removed, we can see the insides. We can see the storage drive and the RAM. So the RAM, unfortunately, is just one stick here. It's a 16 gig stick, so it's single channel RAM but you can see this RAM can be upgraded to dual channel if you wanted to. And here's a better look at the 512 gig storage drive and the brand on this one is uh, Rayson. And you can see there's even room for expansion if you wanted more. Now on a side note here, not that this matters or you'll be doing this, but if you are putting the bottom back on, just make sure you're lining it up properly. I wasn't paying attention when I screwed it back together and it was not on correctly at all. You can see here I probably almost caused damage to it. Now this mini PC does come with Windows pre-installed and one of the very interesting features about this mini PC is that LED on the top. There is a program that also comes preloaded here called RGB lighting control software. Uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward. There's a few different options here. You can turn off that LED light if you wanted to or you can just change up how it functions. Unfortunately, you can't set it to a specific color. Uh, it's always just going to be that rainbow LED. Overall, I think this is a pretty neat feature and something that some people may like. If you don't like it, you can always just turn it off and forget about it. So the first thing I'm going to do here is put the AMD Ryzen 7 5825U through its paces. We're going to try out PUBG here and we can see that the frame rate is stable, but it's not hitting 60 frames per second. I'm just getting over 30 frames per second. In fact, if you wanted to be specific here, it's 38 frames per second. And the GPU you can see is maxed out at 100%, and the temperature on this one is staying under 70 degrees. So what I'm going to do now just to try to boost that frame rate a little bit is uh, turn down the graphics lower than they already are. 
they're already pretty darn low, but uh, I'm gonna turn the render scale down all the way here and just make sure everything is as low as it can go. Now I am still running this at 1080p, but we can see that slight graphics change here bumped it up to about 52 frames per second, or I guess 47 or 51, whatever here. Uh, between 45 and 55, let's just say. The GPU is still at 100%. So I'm going to crank down the resolution just to see what I can get it to. So changing the frame rate from 1080p to 720p. And uh, well, the game's not going to look pretty, but hopefully we're above 60 frames per second. And getting back into the game here, and yeah, we're above 60 frames per second. So now we're sitting around 65-ish, 66 frames per second, which I would say is acceptable if you don't mind the game looking uh, like this. So testing out Street Fighter VI here, and it's a very similar story. I've got the graphics turned down as pretty much as low as we can go, the lowest preset, and I'm getting a stable 60 frames per second. And here's a closer look if you don't believe me. And this game is running at 1080p. Uh, I would say this is pretty good. The GPU isn't even at 100%. And now testing out Fatal Fury City of the Wolves, again with a pretty low graphics setting. And I'm noticing here the game is also running at a stable 60 frames per second. And surprisingly as well, the GPU is not maxed out at 100%. It's sitting around 90. The temperature is also stable at under 70 degrees. Now testing out one of my uh, recent favorite games, Cast and Chill. Uh, this game is set to the maximum graphics settings possible and uh, it's running at an easy stable 60 frames per second. No issues whatsoever with this game and with lighter games like this. Now, if you've never played Cast and Chill before, I do recommend checking it out. I think it's an absolutely fantastic game just to relax to. Uh, anyways, here's the stats for this game. We can see the GPU is at 40% and the temperature has cooled down to under 60 degrees. Now, as for emulation, we're checking out Simu here for Wii U emulation and a game you may have heard about before, maybe not. This one is called Breathing in the Wilderness. And taking a look at this game, I'm getting a little bit over 30 frames per second. I was playing around with things I was unable to get it to 60 frames per second, but it is playable at 30. Now moving on to uh, GameCube emulation here with a, uh, a very popular game called um, Evening uh, Royalty, Evening Prince I think it's called. Uh, anyways here, this one is running at a stable like 27, 28 frames per second in a very demanding area. And this is running at two times native graphics, so 720p. Now, when I turn down the resolution to just run at the native resolution here, I am getting a stable 30 frames per second and 100% game speed. Now, I've had this Blackview MP100 for about a month. I've used it to record and edit videos on this YouTube channel. I've used it for gaming, and I've tried to use it for everyday use. So I'll get into my likes and my dislikes and whether or not I'd recommend this mini PC. So as for my likes here, I like the fact that the RAM and storage can be expanded if you want. The fans on this were very effective at keeping the device under 70 degrees Celsius to prevent thermal throttling. And also they weren't very loud at all. I like the look of this device and the LED light on the top. I thought that was a nifty feature. And I do like the fact that it's powered by AMD, especially if you wanted to, I don't know, throw Linux on this or something. Now, moving on to my dislikes. And uh, first and foremost, the top of this one was scuffed out of the box. If that bothers you, then, uh, well, this was a little bit disappointing. I don't know if all models are like this or just mine because it is a review unit. I've got no idea there. Um, but also taking a look, I wasn't a big fan that this was single channel RAM. That is one upgrade I'd probably recommend doing almost immediately with this device, just throwing another stick in there, doing two 8 gig sticks instead of just one 16 gig stick. The next thing I'm not the biggest fan of is the lack of USB ports. So we've got two USB-C ports on the front and that's all you get for USB-C. And then we've got three USB type A ports and one of those is a USB 2.0 port. Um, just overall in terms of ports, there are not a whole lot. And if you are trying to use this as, I don't know, like an everyday PC, chances are you will need a USB hub. Now, as for gaming, and I don't want to put this in a dislike category. If we took a look, I was struggling to hit 60 frames per second in a bunch of different scenarios. And I would say that's not necessarily the fault of this mini PC. I mean, it's only powered by an AMD Ryzen 7 5825U. So you've got to be realistic there when it comes to performance. So with that being said, before I give my overall recommendation here, let's take a look at the price. 
So as it stands right now, over on Amazon, the Blackview MP100 is priced at $299 overall, currently 25% off, and there's also, I guess, a 5% coupon. However, Blackview did provide me a coupon code to lower the price of this to $269. Nice. So for those wondering, I'll drop the coupon code in the description below and feel free to check it out. It's not an affiliate coupon or anything like that. They literally just gave me a coupon to say, put this on with the review. So there we go. Uh, anyways, I guess that works out for everybody. Uh, if we take a look at the price at, let's just say $269 with that coupon. Um, that's where the price to performance ratio uh, piques my interest. I mean, I wouldn't expect a whole lot out of a computer for 269 bucks, especially in the AAA gaming range. And you saw we were able to get PUBG up and running at over 60 frames per second, Street Fighter 6, City of the Wolves, all up over 60 frames per second. And as for emulation here, it was struggling a little bit with CMU there, but at the same time, it was above 30 frames per second and playable. And for GameCube and Wii, this was absolutely fine. So I would say here at 269 bucks, if you're just looking for some indie games and some light gaming and emulation, this device may be extremely interesting. On top of that, for just an everyday PC that you can do a few extra things with, I would say that $269 price point might also be very attractive. So as to whether or not I would recommend this device, I would say it depends on what you're trying to use it for. If you're looking for the best bang for your buck here and trying to play AAA games, at 269 bucks, you've got to be realistic about that and you're probably not going to find what you're looking for in this price range. But just for some general gaming and some lighter gaming and just general PC use, 269 bucks, that might be attractive to replace an aging PC that you can't really do a whole lot with anymore. Uh, let me know your thoughts about that one, but overall I'd say at 269 bucks, if you're in the market for something like this, the price to performance ratio might be there. So at the end of the day here, the MP100 is not really going to break any performance records and it's not really geared towards that at all. It's a budget mini PC. Is it capable? Yes. Is it comparable to other mini PCs at the same price bracket? Yes. You, there's a lot there with very similar chipsets. So I would say if this has what you like on it and uh, it's geared towards what you're looking for, then sure. Anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Shoutouts to Blackview for providing the MP100 for a fair and honest review. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your estate.